Oh my god, can you believe December is already here? Bonjour darling! Today I'm coming back to you with yet another tag. It is the in December writing tag. But what is in December, you would ask? Well, in December is a tag and a movement created by Megan Tennant, links down below, where in December you read books by indie authors, where whether they are self-published or published by, you know, small houses. And it's a really, really, really amazing thing. You read their books, you post reviews, uh, either on your channel or on Goodreads or on Amazon. Well, all the deal. And Megan Tennant this year also decided to make a tag for writers. I am not yet published, but I have a really big work in progress, so I decided to make this tag so I could talk a little bit about my world and my characters. For that tag, of course, I will use my work in progress, Chronique de la Lune Bleue, Chronicles of a Blue Moon. If you're a French speaker, I will leave, of course, my website down below and you can find all the information about that there. If you're an English speaker, Chronicles of a Blue Moon is a fantasy in which humans can use their voice, the vibration of their voice, to distort the world around them as long as they understand on a scientific level what they are doing and they have enough life force to fuel the enchantment. The people that do that are called, are called enchanteurs, enchanters, and they have seven taboos that they must never break. And one day someone breaks the first taboo. Hence why the first book in the series is called Chronicles of the Blue Moon, First Taboo. I have made, because I edit on my phone, so using all the amazing boards and stuff she made, I can't, but well, I am crafty, so I made myself a little board, like it will do the job and let's go I will use my little bot discord bot Tatsumaki she's amazing if you do TTRPGs on discord I highly recommend Tatsumaki to roll the dice and the principle is really easy for that tag. You have 25 questions and you pick a number between 1 and 25 and then you just check mark the questions you've done until you've got a bingo. Easy peasy. So, let's go for the first question. 25. Now it's a nice. Which character was on Santa's naughty list, but he liked them so much he took them off? I would say, well, it's an easy answer. It would be Seth, or Set in French. Set is um, a thief. He has been a thief ever since he was a child. He's an orphan and he's really, really naughty in that his job is to rob people. But he's also really charming and cunning and good-hearted because he's known hunger, he's known thirst, he's known violence and especially with children, he's a softy. He is not that brave but he's at the same time, meaning he's really, really scared, but he goes in any way, which is real bravery. So yeah, that's my answer. Let's check the 25. Right 
it in the middle. Nice. Now, which one will be our question number two? Nine. Let's check that off. Ho, ho, ho. What's a line or scene that makes you or your readers laugh? Um, I have one in particular that's told by Valentin. He's a soldier and he's talking to his um, lieutenant colonel. Lieutenant colonel, yeah. And he's talking to his troops and he says that around the lines of don't die otherwise I will run behind every note of your soul in the great symphony and kick their asses one by one. He says that because humans have this belief that after you die all the notes that compose your soul and body go back to the great symphony that composes the world itself. So yeah. Um, that's a line that has made me laugh and made my beta readers laugh and I really love it. I, I think I already talked about it on Twitter or something because I was kind of proud of myself for that line. Yeah. So yeah, that's a funny line. Third question. 24. Let's check it off. I see something forming. Santa's workshop. Show us your writing space or a picture of your writing space. Bonus points if it's a disaster zone. My writing space at the moment because I'm living at my parents waiting for... waiting for an apartment or a house in the north of France uh, is my bed and it is an actual disaster it's a two places bed for me alone so I basically write on the left of the bed and leave during the day of course everything else on the right of it let me kind of show you yeah, so here is the disaster. I'm, yeah. I think I get a bonus point. 19. So where is the 19? Right there. We're, we're going well. Santa's bird. Who is your oldest character and around how old are they? So there is two answers to that. My actual oldest character isn't that old physically. She is the ruler of the world, uh, of the country of Cantatoria the country in which the story takes place. She is called the Cantatrice. Um, which English word, English word, sorry, would be good for that? Uh, the Prima Donna, but it's in Italian. I don't know if English people use it uh, also. And she's old because her Soul Symphony, the notes that compose her soul, reincarnates every time her body dies of old age in another body with all of her memory going, coming back to her as she grows old. Um, 
So yeah, technically she's the oldest, but physically, um, biologically, the oldest character is Alaric. And he's 28 years old. 12! Where is the 12? It's here. Holiday parties. Do you have a log line prepared for when someone asks you about your book or do you run and hide? Or do you have a masterful plan of a diversion the rest of us could use? <laughs> no, um, I do have a log... <coughs> Sorry. I do have a log line. It's what I told you. A country in which humans can blah 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 blah. Uh, I'm always ha always happy to talk about my book, talk about the world, the characters and everything. So, yeah. Four. Okay. Going smoothly. We are there at the moment. Question number four, number four. Elves. Do you have any writing helpers you'd like to shout out? Emotional support maybe, or a critic partner, anyone who helps you from the shadows? Of course I have. I'd like to shout out all my beta readers and they are, I am going to tell you their pseudonyms because some of them don't want their names dropped. They are Little Punk, Little Punk, who is also my boyfriend. They are Maester Shirt, they are Seigneur Sauron, Lord Sauron who is, in fact, a marshmallow inside a big piece of armor. And they are Asia, they are Procelia, they are Doc, um, and all the other people that have read my book or tried to write, read my book uh, because they weren't big readers, but they tried to help and I love them so much. They support me a lot and also my mother who hasn't read the book but is a big emotional support. 16. Okay. Wrapping. What character would spend way too much time wrapping presents because they want it to look perfect? Hmm. That's an easy answer. Um, there are three characters for different reasons. The first one is Alaric. So Alaric is a man that lives in the woods because he has um, disability, he can't stop hearing the notes that composes uh, people's bodies and, soul, and souls. Souls, okay. People's body and souls. And it means that he hears them all the time and it, it hurts him actually psychically, psychologically and physically. So he has to live in the woods and he's really handy and he doesn't have a lot of things, he doesn't own a lot of things and, but he's really really caring and giving and yes because he's so soft and he, when he loves someone he wants it to be perfect even though he doesn't have a lot of means to do so. 
so I can imagine imagine him so easily using beautiful flowers and leaves and fabrics to try and make his wrapping the prettiest possible even though he can't buy the beautiful wrapping paper you see um, the other one would be Eleonore Eleonore is a secondary character and she's the cantatrice's uh, first lady first handmaid um, and she loves everything to be perfect and precious because she's a really precious lady so she would make everything perfect like with little bows and a really expensive wrapping paper and maybe even crystals uh, inserted inside the bow to make it sparkling and shining and yeah it will be so perfect because she loves beautiful pretty things and the third character would be Chatty uh, because Chatty is she's a noble also a noble woman but she loves to give to people uh, throughout the book she realizes how privileged she was to be noble noble born and after that I can imagine her wanting to give a lot to people that don't don't have as much as her like Alaric and Seth for example so she would want the present to be meaningful and beautiful for them uh, because she feels almost ashamed to own so many things sorry for the lighting I had to light my lamp because it's almost 5 p.m. so it's getting more six oh we are getting close of the bingo here can you see Christmas lights what character would be the most likely to use Christmas lights inappropriately, such as to tie someone up, shook someone, to rig an explosive, to rig up an explosive, you name it. Oh dear friend, I have two answers to that. Set again would be really handy. Um, he uses any means possible to attain his goals and he's really crafty because he had to survive his entire life with really little resources so yeah if he came into our world with Christmas lights he would find a thousand ways to use that other than for Christmas and also I would say Eleonore because she loves pretty things she's a homemaid she is precious she is one of the most powerful politically people but she's also really crafty and strong and she is a fighter she m is really feminine but she is also really dangerous so yeah she would use christmas lights for danger but also well she loves pleasure so i think she might tie someone for different reasons with those christmas lights 10 10 10 10 see we're getting closer and closer of a bingo okay let me show you Santa's bag. If you could tell Santa one item that should be given to every writer everywhere, what would it be? That's a complicated question. What would be an item that would be useful to every writer? Oh! 
um, on a technical point, I would say um, Donald made especially uh, like to build your world Bible, especially um, for fantasy writers, uh, but even for any writer, I think needs a Bible to keep track of characters, to keep track of places, names, to keep track of anything they write. And for self-care purpose, I would say a reusable glass water bottle. Keep hydrated, people. We need to keep hydrated because you don't realize it, but using all that brain power, it you can get dehydrated pretty easily. Talking about that, where is my own bottle? I'm not following my own advice. Guys, 22. Let's do this. We can do this. I want a bingo. Come on. That's Maki. Are you betraying me? Silent Night. What character refuses to talk to you as a writer? Basically, a character who is hard for you to connect with and write for. I would say Haktil. She's chatty -y little sister and she's a secondary character, but she has a few moments in which we are following her POV. And since since I don't write as much as her as I write the other characters, sometimes I'm a little confused. She's the youngest and she's really... She's a teenager, people. Uh, maybe I'm getting older, but sometimes I feel like uh, it's harder to connect with her because I've never been when I was a teenager I was like a little mouse I was really you know yikes um, I've never been as bold as her uh, so Yeah, sometimes it's hard to connect with her. She's the hardest. She's definitely definitely the hardest. She's She's the one that makes Chatihi Chatihi understand that they are privileged because of their nobility and she's the one that wants to destroy the society as it is to make it more you know stay, make it more fair she's she's a teenager you know seven okay feast What's your favorite food related scene? There is only one food related scene and they... Is it one of my favorites? Well, it has to be because there is only one. It's when Hactil for Chatty is birthday, birthday invites her to eat something together alone and in fact it's not a big spoiler because it's in Chatty's first chapter her introduction chapter so it's in the beginning of the book in fact uh, she, instead of bringing her to a really fancy restaurant like she was supposed to do she organizes a surprise party with the poor all the poor people she helps on a daily basis without her family knowing to show Chatty, as she says the real world and that's her present 
and I really love that scene so much. And it's the only one food related, so... 23! Huh! I should have chosen a smaller thing to do that. Like, it's heavy. See? It's getting fuller and fuller. Yay! Traditions. What holidays or traditions exist in your stories world? If you have too many to list, what's your favorite? My favorite and one that's really important to the story, the only one that I will reveal because it's the only one we see in the first book, is the Silver Oak Festival, Le Festival de Chêne d'Argent. In Cantatoria, there is a really well-known oak that is made of silver but that is alive. It's a mystery. Nobody knows how it's possible. Even the most powerful enchanters can't understand that tree. And every year, in the beginning of summer, the enchantress of Silver Oak, the little village that was built around the tree, what is the world? She chants for the tree and there is a market and people dance and there and uh, merchants for from all around the country and the desert come and it's really a beautiful festival and it's the beginning of all the action in the book. 21 uh. Oh, look! I'm one away from a bingo. Great! Snow Angel. Which of your characters is most likely to make a snow angel and which is most likely to be wishing they were on a beach instead? For the snow angel, I would say Nocturne. She is a child and she loves snow. She grew up in Silver Oak and she, she she's a petulant child. She is so she has so much energy and she likes to play and she doesn't have a lot of time to do it because she's studying a lot to become a really good enchantress and so making a snow angel would be amazing for her to have the occasion to play in the snow like any other children and for the rather be on the sand I would say Chatty E because she grew up next to Massalia, which is a city in the southeast, and it never snows there, and she doesn't really like cold. So yeah, she would rather be on the beach. 14. That doesn't help. Oh yes it does! I'm one away on that line from a bingo. Okay. Never mind. Santa's coming to town. Is your protagonist naughty or nice? If you have multiple books or protagonists, you can do this for multiple. My protagonist. So, um, as I said, uh, no, I don't think I said it. I have three main characters three protagonists plus Hactyl that is a secondary character but has a few chapters of her own. But I have three main characters. Set, I already told you, is a little bit naughty. He's a thief show, so yeah. Alaric is a softy. Um, he's really, really nice to people um, because, because of his 
disability he can't see and talk a lot to people so every time he has the possibility to connect to someone without suffering too much it's really important to him and chatty e is nice too she's an enchantress she's a noble but she learns to be more humble uh, and she wants to help people she really does from the bottom of her heart and she sacrifices a lot for justice and good eight oh my god i have a bingo look bingo okay last question santa baby which of your characters could romance presents out of center? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm trying to think who would do that. Seth would definitely, definitely steal a present from Santa, not romance it. Um, Alaric could never romance anyone really. He's not he he's not like he doesn't even think about romance. Um Nocturne is too young. Hactyl would Hactyl would would she would she romance? No, she wouldn't romance. She would argue with Santa. Chatty E is just, she doesn't care. I would say Eleonore. Eleonore, the first handmaid. She would definitely, definitely romance something out of center. And she would enjoy it too. So yes, that was the in december writing tag oh my god that video is going to be so long to edit i really hope you liked it don't forget to go check megan tennant's channel and stephen partridge's um instagram tv igtv down in the description box and also my social media if you like this video please don't forget also to give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell to be notified of any of my new content you can also follow me on social media links down below and as always au revoir darling <laughs>